Alright, I'll be blunt. I've been a little harsh on Metallica in a lot of my videos that I've posted here on the Cover Killer Nation channel. In reality, the only ones where I seem to give them any sort of credit at all was whenever I kind of did, you know, a band review in two parts. But that was a number of years ago. I think what really needs to happen in order to be truly fair to this band, not to mention explain the fact that despite their recent output, I'm still a really, really big fan of them, is to do this the right way, by doing a complete and total discography review. Which means that it's time for us to start all the way from the beginning, from Kill 'Em All, the very first album, and arguably one of the most cornerstone thrash releases of all time. Now, of course, people will argue that Master of Puppets will really be the one to really occupy that position, but we're not there yet in this discography review, so stick with me. Metallica is a very, very weird tale, honestly. These are, you know, just a couple of guys that got together and wanted to play fast music that was inspired a lot by punk and the new wave of British heavy metal. And whenever they were able to get together, and whenever the initial, you know, incantation of the band basically came to be, it's a little bit different than what we saw and what we see today. There was no Jason Newstead. In fact, originally, there was no Kirk Hammett either. It was occupied by Dave Mustaine uh, by, uh, of uh, Megadeth back then, which, of course, everybody and their mother knows, especially due to the fact that on Kill 'Em All, he has a couple of writing credits. But what about the album itself? I already told you that, that I found this to be one of the cornerstone albums to any thrash collection and probably one of the more impressive debuts of all time, but maybe you need to know some reasons why. Metallica was already working at a torrid pace, not to mention they were getting a lot of popularity around the club scenes, and at this point in time, they had just dumped Dave Mustaine for Kirk Hammett, and had just gotten a fresh young face by the name of Cliff Burton from a band called Trauma. Now, with this foursome set with James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich, they went on to produce their first album. Now, this whole idea of thrash metal at this point in time, you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, was really in its infancy. It was something that was kind of being toyed with, but it wasn't something that really had its cornerstone need-to-have release. It wasn't something that really had even got onto the, onto the map yet. It was something where right now, what was really stirring was bands such as Motley Crue. Glam metal was already starting to pick up its pieces and get its ball rolling. Thrash was about to do the same. With the release of Kill Em All, the landscape was completely changed. It was something that was so breakneck, so furious, and just so one-of-a-kind that it certainly inspired a lot of people. One of the big reasons why the Big Four came together was because all of these guys were kind of, you know, had the similar idea and had the similar motif in mind. It's kind of the way that any great wave really happens. The second wave could easily be, you know, exemplified by these four bands and influenced primarily by these four bands. However, Kill Em All will always have a special place in the hearts of a lot of different people. Just the way in which this whole entire thing comes to be, the fact that there's a random bass solo called uh, Anesthesia in the middle of it, pulling teeth, uh, the fact that The Four Horsemen is a seven minute long epic that's just absolutely furious and just seems to take no prisoners. You know, Motor Breath is something that originally was semi-penned by Dave Mustaine and then was kind of transformed. And then of course we have the live uh, loves such as Seek and Destroy. Seek and Destroy is something that, even though it only lasts about six minutes truthfully, if you look at the Binge and Purge Live Shit DVD, well, Live Shit Binge and Purge, from about, oh, ten years later, originally on VHS, blah, 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 it can be extended to up to 20 minutes. Yeah. It was one of those songs. In fact, it was a song that resonated so powerfully and had that critical phrase, searching, seek, and destroy, that easily is a call and response that was something that you really needed in order to be a great professional live band. You needed something that was going to give your audience a little bit of interaction with you. And, well, let me tell you something. This was a song that definitely was able to provoke that. This is an album that was able to really provoke that. This is also an album that was able to really, really just give a lot of headway to this budding genre. Once Metallica was able to break through, and once we saw the inception of Megadeth, well, the ball was easily rolling. Anthrax would be releasing albums. In fact, they were already doing things on uh, the East Coast. Overkill was already releasing albums out of New Jersey. Exodus was already a band at this point in time. And they were getting primed to release their debut. Think about Slayer. Think about Testament. Think about all, all the bands that followed. Kill Em All wasn't exactly the genesis point of thrash metal. However, Kill Em All was an important, important facet 
as to why this genre almost seemed to explode overnight. This album's pacing is one part due to its raw nature, and really the James Hetfield that you hear on this album is a James that you would barely, barely ever hear again. His vocals were not very well tuned, not to mention he wasn't somebody that wanted to be the vocalist of this band in the first place anyway. It was a role that he was thrust into with the departure of Dave Mustaine. It was a role that he was able to embrace and really was able to do what he could with it, but it's taken many, many years, some vocal coaches, and, well, probably a lot of tea and beer in order for him to become the man that we know today. But on Kill 'Em All, it was raw. It was intense. And it was pretty damn awesome. I really credit the raw intensity of this album as one of the principal reasons why Thrash really gained such a savage reputation overnight. The breakneck speed and all of the different characteristics that you were able to see on some of the earliest Slayer releases easily could be attributed to the fact that they listened to Kill 'Em All and some of these other Thrash classics, these punk classics, some of the roots of the very genre, and just decided, fuck that, we're going to make it even more intense. While Kill 'Em All might not be directly, you know, the reason why a lot of different things happened, one could definitely say that it did have an impact. The rest of this album is something that only legends can speak about. While each and every single song may not necessarily be an absolute Stone Cold classic, each of the songs have their place. Each and every track seems to feel exactly where it should be. It feels right at home. Hit the Lights is a beautiful example of a great, great early track that is just able to seamlessly transition itself onto a debut album, not to mention, with improved recording quality, just sounded all the more better. And it doesn't take away from its raw intensity, but that's one of the reasons why it was great. You could definitely hear all of the different tones and the different influences on this album. You could definitely tell early on that the roots of this band were firmly, firmly grounded in the new wave of British heavy metal and punk as a combined, or as a combination, rather. This is something where all you have to do is listen to punk, or listen to the new wave of British heavy metal, and then listen to Kill 'Em All, and realize that basically it was nothing more than a bona fide fusion. But the fusion worked to perfection, and by themselves, and with the aid of Kirk and James soaring solos, Lars's ridiculous drumming, and Cliff Burton's impressive bass really crafted a revolution. Yeah, Metallica had a lot of help in pushing Thrash to the top in the 1980s in speed metal. However, Kill 'Em All was definitely a lot more than just a baby step toward greatness. This was more like a profound leap forward. It was something that immediately put Metallica's name all over the map. One of those debuts that comes maybe once in a lifetime. Here's an example for you. Here's something that perhaps makes a little bit more sense. Whenever you consider Adele's 21, you have to remember that that was her second album. It sold over 10 million records and is considered to be one of the best you know, commercial success stories of the modern age. This is something that Metallica did on their very first record. Did they sell 10 million? No. Did they have to? Absolutely not. All that they needed to do was to put out a record that was going to make an imprint. And they definitely did that. It's almost like the first time you get arrested and the first time your thumbprint has to go on that piece of paper, identifying you in the record. This was Metallica's initial thumbprint on the music industry. And damn, it was an impressive one. I wish I had a metaphor that would really accurately articulate a thumbprint to what Kill 'Em All truthfully did. But I don't think one exists. This album is very, very important. And while for a lot of people it may not necessarily be one of their, you know, absolutely critical albums to own, as compared to, you know, what they would put out in the future, which we'll be discussing in videos that follow, I think this is one that is essential to own. I think this is one that every metal fan that can perhaps credit Metallica to getting them into the genre, it's one that they need to have. They need to understand the inception, the genesis, the baby steps. You know, they need to know where everything came from. This is the album that started it all. This was the album that awoke the sleeping giant. And this was the album 
that was going to be the reason why not only future albums were allowed to exist, but why the future albums hold such a special place in the hearts of metal fans. For those of you who haven't listened to Kill Em All, or perhaps just haven't listened to it lately, do so again. This is something where you will once again recapture all of the impressiveness that was there in such a raw and dirty variety. Something where it didn't necessarily matter how fast they played, how clean they played, or really what they played. Fun part about it is that in having the rules, they were able to simultaneously semi-construct a rulebook. A rulebook for thrash metal. One that would be followed by the letter by some bands in the future. For those of you who know of the classic that is Kill Em All, listen to it again. This is one that demands to be revisited every once in a while. It's always good as a thrash fan to remember your roots. It's always good as a metal fan to remember one of the most impressive debuts that our genre has ever seen. And if you disagree with that, that's fine. But it is very important. It's something that put metal on the map in America in the 1980s. It's something that started a revolution in America in the 1980s. And it was something that started a revolution all around the world. Actually, it's something that furthered a revolution that was taking place all around the world. <laughs>